Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out Thanks for Playing by developer Alchemy Games. Uh, this is something a little bit different. I chose to do a sort of a viewer request day for today. So last night on Twitter via my handle at RockleySmile I chose to put out to everybody that is uh, my follower. Send me some submissions, send me a browser game that you think is interesting and I'll look through them all and I'll pick one, uh, you know, based on what I think looks the coolest and today that is the one we've done. So we're going to be doing Thanks for Playing. Uh, you can thank at uh, Loken2014 on Twitter for the submission, and I think this is a very cool concept. So we're going to be going through a platformer completely backward. Uh, the premise is such that basically there is a mad scientist of some kind who is activating some sort of a time portal or, or paradox creating device, and we got there just a little bit too late, so the only solution is for us to retrace all of our steps back to the beginning of the game, and see if we can maybe undo this action. So it actually plays out as a bit of a puzzle, even though uh, it's maybe more straightforward as far as a platform. I think it's fairly short, uh, but it looks pretty nice, and I think it's going to be a good time. So let's jump into things and see what we can do here. So, uh, Wunderbar, the reactivator is working. I don't want to do an accent here. <laughs> it feels a little bit rude. Uh, Agent, uh, we will see each other at the Origins. Beware the paradoxes. Ah ha ha. Okay, well, let's press any key to skip, including the any key. I don't have an any key on my keyboard, guys. What am I supposed to do about that? There we go. Alright, so you'll see our man on the bottom right corner of the screen there. And the last level has been completed, our distinction has been obtained. Uh, so we can move left and right with the arrow keys, we can jump with up, and I think that's really all we have to do as far as uh, puzzles go, or jumping goes. So we're clearing through all these crystals, we're going to be picking them up uh, in reverse, so we're actually putting them back down. Uh, you'll see there was that 100 points there. What that meant is when I see 100 points show up on the screen, that's the indicator that I'm supposed to jump. Uh, so the answer is U. Okay, so we're going to be learning the plot, I guess, in, in reverse order. And so 100 points. Uh, oh, high fall. Okay, distinction obtained. Uh, this was not a fall but a jump. There's no way you could have uh, jumped this high. Do, uh, don't unjump from higher than you could jump. Alright, so you gotta kinda put yourself in the reverse position here of what we're usually used to doing. So, if we were to reverse this whole scenario, I would have come in this room from the left top corner, I would have fallen down, and then I would have slowly topped up all these little steps, eventually landed on that monster and moved to the right, right? So, uh, in this case, since we're trying to undo all of that, we have to look at this a little bit differently. So, 100 points, and we'll just hop down, and then, there we go, I can actually jump right up that edge. And I got a four-hit combo, so I want to make sure whenever I see those hundred points, we're gonna hop along through to the next one. I can't, I missed, yeah, I missed the uh, the hundred points there. Some points have been uh, obtained. Enemy should have died. Uh, quickly unjump from floating. Away. Right. So uh, basically, this is sort of like unsinking in Assassin's Creed, if you could think of it that way. And I want to make sure that I don't break the time sequence. We only have so long and so many derivations that were allowed before things. Uh, don't work out the way they're supposed to to keep in line with the uh, the story that we're creating here I should comment uh, also the graphics very nice animation seems very lovely uh, There's some really nice little lighting effects. You can see the rays coming through that fan in the background uh, Little subtle things like that television with the, the you know static -y lines going on it uh, The art style very uh, kind of in your face reminds me a little bit of like Aeon Flux a little bit Maybe that's going a little too far, but like mix that with uh, Insanely Twisted Shadow Plan, and I think maybe that's at least uh, the beginnings of where I think this is going. Uh, very distinctive color scheme, I think things tend to be staying towards like the blue-green palette, where there's a little bit of a highlight of purple in there occasionally, and I guess this is not how we go. Uh, this is not a fall, but a jump. No way you could jump this high. Okay, so I gotta keep in mind, I can't just walk in from the left side of the screen and jump up to the top of that platform. Uh, also, by the same account, I probably can't just grab all of those and then ungrab them again, or scratch that, reverse it. Uh, so we'll just skip all of those, and I guess it was sort of a trap. So we will continue on backward. Uh, Alright, so we're going to do another bridge, I guess. Oh, I don't know what was supposed to happen there. Uh, I'm noticing, though, if you look at the ground, there is a very subtle little hint that I think we're supposed to take... Uh, into account when we're crossing these gaps, and that is that there's like the crumbled remains of the bridge that would have been there. So we got to kind of use that as a guide mar or marker or guidepost to kind of keep it in our heads as to where exactly we should be going. Uh, all right, so evidently we can't go that way, so we have to find a better route. Uh, hop across this gap. So if I hop down again, no, okay, that doesn't work. So why don't we try? I guess we'll go the other direction. See if maybe we can go 
Oh, no, it didn't quite work. Uh, zigzag pattern might work. Alright, so we can kind of hop down little by little. We've got our enemy, enemy, and another enemy, and there we go. We made it up the edge. Very good. And then the electricity started. Helena, the look in her eyes when you brought her in front of me. So little bites and bits of story, one at a time. Alright, we got another paradox. Um, what am I supposed to do about this one? Maybe I should jump. Oh, there we go. Alright, so there was a platform. I, I should have taken my own hints into account that I was just talking about there. I had a feeling that probably wouldn't work out, but, you know, we'll learn it a little bit by uh, each move. Also reminding me quite a bit of Out of This World. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Oh, I think I picked up a jewel there by accident that I shouldn't have picked up twice. Uh, clearly very, very distinctive paths that you have to take to be able to actually go through this. Uh, this is more of a, a trial and error sort of puzzle game than I think it is a traditional platformer, so that's why I kind of felt uh, necessary to, to go for, like, the puzzle platformer uh, demarcation before... Okay, I can't jump down there. I'm um, still not entirely clear on how exactly I'm supposed to get across this whole thing. We will continue to try, though. Alright, that doesn't work. I need to maybe just jump to that one little platform. Oh, I don't know why I just did that. I need to jump at the beginning. Let's see if we can get all of the dust off the floor before we fall down. Alright, uh, jump up. Okay, that works. No, that does not work. Um, <laughs> seriously, I am learning this as we go. It's a very interesting premise, though. I can't say that I've really ever seen anything like this. And yes, I have played a bunch of games that have time uh, things going on in them. I mean, just look at Braid. But uh, this definitely functions a little bit different to that. Now, what if I just hop... Oh, I can't jump down either. Alright, once we see this whole thing put together, it's going to start to make a lot more sense. And you can see our score is getting shorter and shorter, or lower and lower as we go uh, on. So we can actually sort of see when we're going to reach the end of the game, which I think is kind of a cool thing uh, in and of itself. Um, so that already doesn't work. I guess maybe there's another little edge that I need to jump down to below that other platform. There's still a little bit of, you know, dusty debris left on the ground there. I'm not sure what's up with this, why we keep doing... I don't know, I guess I can sort of go in whatever pattern I want, as long as I just don't step in the wrong place or something. Alright, you can see the jewels. Now what? Now... I can't jump down. Can I jump across? Is there a platform, like, over here? No. But I do have to make sure I get all the jewels, otherwise the score isn't gonna line up properly, and then I will have altered time, I suppose. Although... What happened? Oh! There is another platform. I guess that was enough to save me. Right, because I needed to be able to make that path to get back up. Uh, race this time, race this reality. Alright, things look like they're going to get a little bit more difficult here. Impossible sequence complete. Oh, I guess this is the impossible sequence. Uh, well, I see there's a platform in the center here. Doesn't feel that impossible. There's two, and then, what, a gap, and then jump across. No. There's actually more. I saw there was more debris on the ground. Ooh, oh, I just didn't jump there. That was entirely my bad. There we go. And what do I do here? Maybe I'll just bend around this corner. Is that something? Yep. Doesn't feel impossible. So we're actually, we're sort of discovering level design as we go, which is really cool. Actually, that probably should have let me keep that life. But I didn't really land on it, so I guess I won't fault it. Alright, well, that time was just, again, slip of the finger. The UI and everything in this is also very cohesive. I think the art style uh, really does a nice job all the way through. <clears throat> Alright, now... Now what? Now I'm stuck in this corner and I can't get back out. Or can I? Oh. Uh, jump across here now? Oh. I don't entirely get it. Alright, we're one more try, maybe, and we'll get it. I wonder if there's different endings based on if you, like, altered reality too much, or, like, didn't alter it enough or something. I was planning on actually going through the whole thing, but I'm, I'm starting to think maybe the, uh, the trial and error is gonna get a little frustrating if I continue on for too long. Uh, but I can tell, like, how much of the game is left, like I said, based on the score in the corner, which I think is quite a cool idea. Uh, okay, well, that's one way, I suppose. Oh, alright, we made it through. 
Uh, it was my last hope to see her. You took my Helena, but maybe I will see her again. Evidently not, because I'm a big jerk. Okay. Enemies. Uh, oh, I was hoping there would be some platforms there. Didn't seem to be the case. I guess we need to double back and head down. Enemy. Enemy. Platform. Oh. No. Okay, that's a fail. Uh... <laughs> This could be a really interesting concept developed into a much longer game if uh, they wanted to go in that direction. I think the the groundwork here is pretty solid, uh, for an idea anyway, and I would really uh, be into seeing, like, what would they do if we could go into, like, you know, full budget, uh, serious detail, cutscenes, story exposition, like, all that stuff. You know, take it all the way to the end and see where you can go with it. I think they would probably do a pretty good job just based on what I've seen here. Alright, so we'll go down, we'll try and do a little double back Oh, I did it again. It is a little frustrating sometimes when you just can't seem to find the right path. You, well, it's partially because I'm just a big dummy and I'm kind of terrible at some puzzle games. I also have a pretty bad memory, so those two things together can often result in some of that feeling. And there we go. Oh, I missed the enemy. I didn't have... Well, I had a pretty big window of time with which to hit it, but I just didn't. Alright, so then we go down. No. Ah, oh, I did it again. And then the enemies start to spawn in. Every temptation is, is just to jump all over the place and try and get down to a new level. And I can't seem to handle not falling off of that platform for some reason. I also missed a gem there, I believe. Yeah, I did it again. Maybe I need to go left at that point and not that direction anymore. I like how the enemy actually seems to spawn from the point with which you crushed it. Probably, uh, what needs to happen there. Oh, really? Also, pretty nice atmospheric background music. I mean, it's not exactly the, the most present thing. It's more of like a little bit of a drone there, which is just enough to give you the ambience, and I think that's definitely appropriate. Uh, fits nicely with the color scheme and the art that's going on. Everything definitely seems appropriately dystopian and then torn down, industrial and all of that. Uh, you're definitely getting that sci-fi vibe, I would say. Uh, the spiders also... Oh, you know what else this reminds me of? Samurai Jack. That is absolutely what this reminds me of, and that is a really good thing for something to remind me of. Great art style in that show. Uh, so, jump here? Oh, I can go up. Alright, now we're on to something. Now what? Jump down? Okay, uh, I see there's gonna be gems. You should be clear now. Oh, enemies spawning in and up the path. There we go. Alright, we looks like we're almost at the end, so maybe I will go ahead and finish. Thanks for playing The Last Hope of Dr. Sight. Sight meaning time again, by the way. Oh, I guess, was that the end? The Last Hope of Dr. Sight. He started with a score of 160. Right, so, okay, that is exactly what I was sort of hinting at before. Uh, the more in tune with reality, the, the normal timeline that you can be, the better your actual starting score would be, and obviously you want to shoot for zero. So that's kind of a cool way to augment uh, the score system. I think it's actually a really nice concept. All through, actually, I think there's a pretty cool concept. Uh, like I said, it's got a few flaws, maybe, in my eyes, but I wouldn't say that they're anything all that bad, and I think this game is definitely worth a look. It is totally free. I'd love to hear if you guys could do better than I could, so feel free to let me know in the comments what you think about that. Uh, and I will give you a very short little closing uh, thing, because I know it's been a, a topic of conversation lately uh, that my outros have gotten a little long again. I keep trying to not do that, and then it just happens anyway. So uh, check out the link in the description if you want to try this game yourself. It is free, available in the browser for you to go ahead and play. Uh, there is also some other stuff in there, like my Twitter, my Facebook, and some others, as well as, uh, you know, my Twitch. And, of course, Indie-Impressions.com, so if you want to browse on over there, 500-plus games might be a good time. I think you'll find something cool. Uh, but that is going to do it, guys. Yeah, see? See how short it was? <laughs> you thought I couldn't do it. So, uh, yeah, leave a like if you'd like to leave any support. I do appreciate that. And, of course, make sure to come back again tomorrow. New games every single day. So I will catch you then, and I hope you have a lovely night. Later, guys!